Thank you for that introduction and welcome to two truly exceptional leaders, Julia Gillard, the former Prime Minister of Australia, and Ngozi Akonjuela, the newly elected, and we are all still celebrating, Director General of the World Trade Organization. I am so thrilled that you are both with us today to talk about women, leadership, and gender equality at a time in the world when we really need all of that. So I want to start with your book. You both recently came out with a fantastic book on women and leadership, which is told through the stories of several trailblazing women, obviously including yourselves. And you talk about how gender has shaped their experiences and their paths. So many of the stories resonated with me as I know it did to women around the world. And I want to ask you across all of those stories, what do you find the most compelling themes and experiences that stand out the most? And I want to start with you, Julia. Well, for me, what really stands out in this book is we interviewed women from around the world and we were trying to work out how much of lived experience is common to women everywhere and how much is different because of culture and context. And we actually found that women in very different parts of the world all felt special pressures simply because they were women who were leading. A greater focus on appearance, more interest in family structures, uh, walking a tight rope between strength and empathy if they came across as too tough people would react against that if they came across as too soft people would think they didn't have the backbone to lead uh, that there's more of a price paid for errors because women in leadership positions are fewer in number and so errors stand out more and are talked about more uh, so each of these things was in common for our women leaders around the world uh, what's come out of that, of course, in the book is uh, some change strategies. What can we do to make it different to ensure that these gendered barriers are cleared out of the way? And we also survey the global research base to try and get the best tools into people's hands to make a difference. Ultimately, the message is one of optimism. We both think that there's considerable joy in leadership in getting to shape your world. We want to encourage women to go for it. And we also think that we can see change, but we must accelerate the pace of it. Well, to, to add on to what uh, Julia has uh, stated it uh, so well, um, but you know, some of the statistics on gender equality are really striking. And we start the book with sharing this because what we say is even if there have been improvements in the role of women in leadership, but it's at such a slow pace that it will take decades to get gender, any gender equality. So just to quote some of that, of the 193 uh, United Nations members, only 57 have ever had a, a woman leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 2000, there were four women leaders. Today, they're about 13 or 14, which people would say, great, this is a, a lot of progress, but just look at it, measure it. And you see that if we continue at that pace, it's going to take decades to get any kind of gender equality. And one of those, the ones I love most uh, that Julia uh, brought forward is the one of Nobel Prize winners. There have been 900 ever since the Nobel Prize started. And out of those 900, only 53 have been women. Uh, you look at uh, CEOs, Fortune 500, 6.6% of CEOs are women. FTSE 100 in London, 6%. And one could go on and on. So, you know, looking at these statistics, we really wanted to look at you know, as Julia said, what are the barriers? Why doesn't it happen faster? And what are the experiences that these women have? And one of the, the interesting ones on a positive side that we found uh, with all the women is that when they were growing up, they were in environments that nurtured them, that did not hold them back, that didn't say you can't do this, or only boys do that. They were not sort of made told you have to be a leader or anything but they were also told you can do anything they were they were not told that boys do this and girls do that so all of them had this kind of encouraging environment which made them feel they could do anything and we thought that related to our own two experiences and was very interesting as a startup environment and i think parents should could also learn from that you know you have your girls you know, provide an environment that makes them feel they can do anything. 
And I'm sure many women are doing that now. And that should be an easy thing to change. You know, that's wonderful. Um, can I ask you about the specific question of women leading countries? And I, I was really struck by recent analysis from the Center for Economic Policy Research in the World Economic Forum that found that countries led by women had systematically and significantly better COVID-19 outcomes with half as many deaths on average as those led by men. So why is that? And what can we learn from women's leadership during this crisis right now that we can translate into larger lessons about leadership writ large? That research is very compelling, but I think we just have to be a little bit careful. We actually in the book talk about neuroscience and uh, the analysis of men's and women's brains. And you would recall that several years back, everybody was talking about men are from Mars, women are from Venus, as if our brains are wired differently. That's actually not true but we are conditioned differently. The social conditioning we grow up in and the way in which we view leadership is different and the research base clearly shows that, which is why we are most accepting of female leaders when they are seen to combine strength, a trait we associate with men in gender stereotyping, with empathy, a trait we associate with women. And I think in this pandemic era, those traits, strength and empathy have been exactly what we've been looking for from our leaders. We've wanted to know that they're strong enough to get us through, but they do get that we're all uncertain, we're all worried that this has been a pressurised time for us as individuals. Or put another way, I think the leadership style that has least prospered during this era is the ultra macho blustering style of leadership, not worrying about the facts, not taking expert advice. Uh, that might have served to get male leaders through uh, political crises in the past, but it doesn't work in the face of a virus because the virus isn't interested in swagger. Uh, the virus is just going to do what it's going to do and keep infecting human beings. I do hope that this era spirals us into a more major discussion about leadership where we end up concluding that we want to see strength and empathy from all leaders, women and men, and that that is the future. Let me just add uh, to that. I mean, again, Julia has stated it uh, very well, and we shouldn't jump to any conclusions. This is emerging research, and it would be delightful if it is proven really to be uh, the case. But um, I, one of the elements that, that might be at play also among all those women leaders is trust. Uh, when a leader has built trust over time with their population, then they're able to take difficult decisions faster and, and act faster. And I think that uh, many of those women took tough decisions early but they were able to get their uh, countries to go along because they trusted them. There wasn't as much uh, bad feeling about it as maybe in some other countries. And that could help. It says one thing about leadership, uh, not just for women, but for everyone. If you build trust with those you're leading and they believe you have their best interest in mind and you're using the best source of information, as Julia said, then they will go along and things will work better. This is wonderful. This is a clear agenda for action for this year and beyond. I want to thank you both so much for sharing your time with us, your wisdom and experience. This has been criminally short amount of time to have with you both, but I really thank you so much for it. Everyone should go out and read the book. And we're all just very lucky to have you as leaders, as trailblazers, and frankly, as women who just get stuff done in the world. So thank you for everything you've already done. Thank you for all the things you still have to do. And, uh, and happy International Women's Day to you both. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.